Hi everyone, this is Fionn Apollo. So I think it's safe to say that, at least as far as the art world is concerned, there is a very great deal of uncertainty flowing around. Well, that seems to be a pretty constant thing with the art world, honestly, but today I wanted to look into something pretty near and dear to my heart, which is a reflection of this. Education within the creative sectors, the views around them, and, well, as the title might suggest, whether or not it's even worth it anymore, considering how much is going on right now. This topic has been spurred on by the recent development of one of the most reputable art universities in France using generative AI in the advertising, but what's more on this is that I think especially in the last 10 to 15 years, people are wising up to the fact that having a degree in any subject, creative or not, doesn't necessarily guarantee that you will be able to land a job, not a good job, just a job, within your chosen field. And with all of the different perspectives on the arts at the moment, there seems to be a disconnect happening where art in particular is both being ridiculed and deemed as unnecessary by the general public, and yet more and more people want access to it as much as possible. For anyone who doesn't know this, and because I spent a lot of money on it, I want to make sure you all do in fact know this. I actually have both a bachelor's and a master's degree in animation, with a specialisation in hand-drawn 2D and narrative storytelling. I spent a lot of time studying and looking at how different stories are crafted in order to apply that to my own works, and I like to think I'm somewhat decent at drawing, just putting that out there. But the thing about academia and having qualifications in a creative field is that having a lot of experience in your studies and writing a bunch of essays on animation obviously doesn't equate to actually being a good animator. Not only that, but because these industries are so current, meaning they are constantly developing due to things like cultural shifts, technology, politics, etc., you also have every likelihood that the things you are learning at this current moment might be outdated by the time you actually come around to applying for certain jobs. And this unfortunately includes situations such as particular sections or niches within a professional field being deemed as obsolete, in part due to new developing technologies like AI. I also still remember something that was said by one of my lecturers back in my bachelor's that was pretty sobering. He said that no matter how much we study, we still have the same amount of likelihood of finding a job as some random Joe who worked hard to perfect his skills in his bedroom and didn't bother to go through the trouble of putting himself in debt. Whether you pursue animation, illustration, fine art, creative writing, or pretty much any creative degree at the moment, the technology and the skills required to keep yourself in demand once you're actually in the industry mean that you have to constantly keep yourself updated and relevant in your own time. Certain technologies are developing that can both help and hinder us, and even the way in which creatives are sought out is changing as well. More and more people these days are being scouted via social media where they're more likely to be flexing their creative muscles. But this also comes with the caveat of artists now having to focus on being marketing experts as opposed to just being artists. But just having a competitive market isn't the only thing that concerns me. There are a lot of factors at play at the moment that might make people think twice about whether getting a degree in the arts is something they really want to do. So as someone who went ahead and did just that, and still doesn't regret it despite the direction my life took, I just wanted to give my two cents on it. I've probably made all of this seem pretty bad, haven't I? But that's not all there is to what's being discussed here, and I'm hoping it will give pause to a lot of anxiety surrounding these issues. If you like what you're hearing, then please consider liking and subscribing. Animation is my passion, and I just really like to talk about it. But I also like hearing your guys' thoughts on these topics as well, since I'm not the reigning authority on these things, and there's every likelihood someone in the comments might have more up-to-date knowledge than I do. What do you think of creative degrees? Are you considering a degree in a creative subject like art, animation, creative writing, or something similar? Do you have one of these kinds of degrees? Would you say it was worth it? Please let me know. All right, let's go for it. Just FYI, before we begin, I will be coming at this from a Western, particularly British perspective when it comes to education, so please just be aware of that. If you have different experiences or knowledge regarding the perceptions around higher education in a different part of the world, please feel free to leave a comment because honestly, I'm very interested in it. So we are all very well aware that traditionally, university was not something easily attainable for the masses. In time gone by, it was often a pursuit of wealthy men and the clergy, and was also more akin to a social club which allowed these men to become more acquainted before being let loose into the workforce, namely in places like Parliament, Congress, courthouses, churches, and many other such places which ensured this particular brand of individual stayed within their respective positions of power. The exact point in time in which university became more accessible to the common man was speculated to be around the 18th and 19th centuries, or the Industrial Revolution. Prior to this, university education was not only reserved for the wealthy, but also had a special focus on religion as 
well. But as the preferences and uses for religion waned in favour of the trendy new thing that was science, more specialised knowledge in the subject was required which the upper class and clergymen typically didn't possess. So as a result, university degrees were then offered to those with more concise expertise in things such as engineering, physics, and other such similar fields of study. And because of this historic association with the wealthy in particular, getting a degree was often considered the biggest stepping stone towards getting better chances in the job market, higher wages, better opportunities to progress, etc. And so the point in which university became more favourable was following the two world wars in particular. University and college became a much more common and achievable cornerstone of learning and career development for the average person as many societies wanted to rebuild after losing so many soldiers and civilians. The social aspect in particular became much more attractive as opposed to alternatives such as joining the military, which of course still had a bit of a visceral association to it at the time. Prior to the Second World War, in fact, university just wasn't seen as something worth investing in by the state, which had a change of heart and began to see the promotion and extension of higher education as crucial to economic development. People wanted another pathway to achieving a decent standard of living. So as a result, ever since then, there has been a big push for people to get educated. More state funding was put into helping higher education be easier to afford, incentives to study became higher, scholarships more frequent, and the benchmark of admission for more local colleges and universities became that much more attainable until eventually we came to the modern day where having a university degree is now considered an entry-level requirement for many, many job positions. Now, there's a lot I can say about this, how, while I can see how it developed, the objective very clearly spiralled and people seem to have lost sight as to why getting a degree became important. And instead, it feels like people get pushed into it a lot more now. It's like we're running into a wall. People are being told to go to university because it's what everyone does, but it's not really changing whether or not you get hired for your specific area of expertise. As I mentioned before, having any type of degree now feels like an entry-level requirement for even low-paying jobs. The objective of university is less so now to do with any kind of specialization that may come out of it, except in specific circumstances with specific subjects, and more to do with the fact of proving that you have a work ethic. And this couldn't be truer for arts and humanities degrees, it seems, which is ironic considering in pre-war Britain when it came to higher education, students from middle and upper classes disproportionately studied subjects in the likes of medicine and engineering, whilst those from lower income backgrounds tended to study in the arts, perhaps a reflection of the higher fees and costs associated with subjects like medicine. The arts and humanities have always been some of the most prominent subjects to be diminished when times become more uncertain, because people don't really see them as all that valuable compared to others, which is fair given the time period we just talked about. Would you rather a war medic tending to your wounds or have an artist sketching your pain while you bleed out? Bit of an extreme example, but it gets the point across. But I think what causes a lot of this vitriol towards arts and humanities based fields of study is that we tend to view them through a more individualistic lens, because obviously why wouldn't you? That's the whole point of studying in a specific field, that's the whole point of going to university, you're trying to further your own interests. But I often find that this fundamentally misses the point of these subjects entirely. They are much more community driven than we realise, and if we take the whole job and financial security aspect away, why do people feel that art is important? Well, for one, if we look at art less so as something that benefits the individual and more as something that benefits a community, the arts can be seen as a method of preservation in regards to the culture of a particular place. Art is made to be seen and to stir something different in every single person who views it. Countries like Italy and France, for example, place a lot of emphasis on these subjects as cornerstones of their heritage. Many people internationally associate cities like Paris and Rome as being heavily entrenched in the arts, as places where the beauty of the human spirit can flourish, which contributes to their global appeal. So it only makes sense that they would want to commit to preserving that. This also honestly makes the whole recent scandal regarding Goblons in Paris so upsetting, but we'll get to that. Despite the previous statistic of lower class students studying creative degrees, artistic subjects historically were not something that the working class could always pursue. The fact that so many working class people are now able to obtain uni degrees in general shows how the view on higher education has shifted, but the idea of pursuing an art degree in particular has always held at least some small degree of classism. Only people who are already in a financially secure position could even think about spending so much money on a degree that wouldn't guarantee a job you could comfortably live off. And as mentioned before, many upper class people didn't go to university with the sole purpose of furthering their career prospects. Their financial security is already more or less guaranteed, so instead they go for the social aspect. This is also the reason why so many upper class individuals go to specific schools and universities such as Eton, Oxford, or the Ivy League schools in the States. And it also happens to be why their admission requirements are often so much lower than they are for working class applicants. 
So effectively, a degree in the arts historically is one that, alongside most other fields of study, were made inaccessible to the general public for a very long time. And for the arts to be a preferred subject, even when it isn't considered one that would be especially helpful within a particular socio-political or economic climate, whether that be during wartime, an economic recession, or whatever the situation might be, I find that to be quite significant in regards to the human condition of wanting something to strive for outside of merely surviving and crawling up that corporate ladder. Personally, I think that's quite a noble pursuit in the face of so much uncertainty. But is that still the case right at this moment in time? When we look at the modern day issues of art degrees, it's not really that different from what we've seen in the past, but the more intricate problems do appear to be much more visible. Thanks to social media, it's become easier to spread information fast, though this does come with the risk of misinformation being spread just as quickly, but it does also lend itself to the average person being more aware of the inner workings surrounding certain industry-wide situations. A big issue with this though is that it can turn people away from wanting to be a part of such workings. Social media has a bad habit of bombarding us with every terrible thing that's happening in the world all at once, and it can be easy for people to end up going down the spiral of despair where they just can't see a light at the end of the tunnel. I know that especially in regards to things like the animation industry at the moment, with so many people being out of work and some workers even saying they are instead looking for alternative employment, it can be easy to think that delving into a creative degree at this time is a fool's errand. But one thing I will say about this is that it's very much a thing that only seems as bad as it is because, again, social media tends to show us the worst of any given situation first and foremost. And I think this is affecting younger people in particular who are seeing everything being a mess with no other frame of reference for how things should be, and thus feel pressured to have everything figured out by the time they hit age 20, which I personally don't agree with. Honestly, I think more people should wait a few years before pursuing higher education because let me tell you, it's never going to be the right time. I did my masters during COVID, even though beforehand everything about my decision seemed like it was fated for me to get my dream career, and then March happened, and everything shut down, and the industry died. <laughs> yes, there might be a big push right now towards AI stealing work from creatives and big companies rolling back on productions for the sake of tax write-offs, but let me tell you, variations of these perceived threats have always been around. It's just a matter of recognizing the pattern and learning to adapt. AI in particular is a hot topic that is being pushed by many, many different bodies at the moment, including education, business, and technology sectors. It honestly feels like it's getting to the point where the bottom line has less to do with how effective this technology actually is is at whatever they want to do with it, but rather how much work it can cut out of the whole equation regardless of the resulting quality of the end product. And that's the same with a variety of other industries as well, mind you, fast fashion being one such example. We live in an age of convenience where people are seemingly less willing to put work into things, but want a fast output for a low cost at the expense of any perceived longevity. And I feel like AI is the culmination of this particular phenomenon. I am talking mostly about the people putting these products out, by the way, not the consumers. I'm fully aware that people on low incomes are more likely to buy fast fashion. I'm not trying to pin the blame on you, but also like don't let the fact enable you if you do have access to alternatives, just saying. Anyway, if we take AI social media accounts, for example, they work pretty much identically to those Instagram repost accounts that save other people's artworks and post multiple fully rendered pieces a day without crediting the original artist usually, just so they can take advantage of the algorithm and garner a massive amount of engagement. It's got nothing to do with posting something you're proud of and giving people time to savor it or anything like that. It's just to push things out quickly in the hopes of a fast reward. And this version comes with the added bonus of not even having to shop around for the pictures you steal. You can just plug in a prompt and get posting. Even companies and groups that are affiliated with the world of art, despite massive backlash from human artists, keep trying to use AI in places where they think it's least likely to be noticed. Wacom, or Wacom, I don't know how people say it, I say Wacom, a company very well known for creating digital art tablets, was caught using AI art during its Lunar New Year advertising campaign a few months back. Has Wacom ever actually done a Lunar New Year campaign aside from this one? Is it a regular thing? Do they plan to do these kinds of advertising ventures for other holidays? And is AI a way for them to achieve this without having to actually seek out different human artists to pay for the rights to use their artworks every single time? It wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. In fact, I'm pretty certain that's the case. Which finally brings me to the subject of using such technology that seems antithetical to art as a concept within higher education. As some of you may have already heard, Goblin's Le Col d'Image, or the College of Visual Communication and Art, 
Arts in Paris, which is the top most ranked university in France for animation, recently released an advertising campaign on its website created by a group of students which utilized AI generated images. Uh, just notice the French flag next to the Eiffel Tower here that doesn't even have all of the three blocks of colors on it. And it's not just Gublans doing this. Multiple university courses from France all the way to Australia are now implementing the subject of AI into the curriculum. And in a way, I can understand why this is being done because a big aspect of these subjects is to assess different methods of visual works being created and why, regardless of morality, as academic studies are meant to be as objectively neutral as possible. And from a purely analytical standpoint, I can even appreciate that they are willing to look into the effects AI is having on the current creative landscape. But at the same time, I don't like it when these courses try to use that as a way to push AI as an alternative route to creating original works, because nothing about AI's method of generation is original. And I think that in particular might also be a factor which is turning people off from these creative degrees, because those who stand on principle of not wanting to engage in any way with AI will view this as a letdown by these establishments that claim to uplift artists and help them along in their professional endeavors. In short, many feel that the use of AI cheapens the degree and tanks the reputation of the establishment willing to use it, which, understandable. If I'm spending thousands to attend a prestigious school, I want to learn every skill they can give me, not just how to type words into a lottery box. This is also compounded by the increasingly common devaluation of art among both the general population, and even those higher on the food chain like politicians and lawmakers seem to carry the same sentiment. Last year, Rishi Sunak, the current UK Prime Minister, proposed a crackdown on what he referred to as Mickey Mouse degrees by proposing a cap on the number of students such courses can enroll at university based on the estimated value for money, which, considering university education in the UK costs around 9000 a year, it sounds like a good idea in theory and probably logistically to the people who want a guaranteed return investment from these courses, but it also massively encourages the sentiment that these degrees and the creative sectors they fall under aren't worth investing in and really just misses the point of them. While, yes, there may be many aspects of the creative work environment that university can't teach you, it also works to ground you and help you gain the more tangible skills, such as how to make connections between the work you're doing versus the demands of your professors slash potential future clients. It teaches you organizational skills. It even gives you a starting point of people who might pop up now and again throughout your creative career. I will say the worst thing that universities tend to do is make classmates treat each other like competition. And I know this happens especially badly within those cutthroat art school places, which I don't agree with at all. Don't let any rivalries get ugly and try to always be gracious. Your classmates can be your biggest advocates. Me and a friend in my masters literally found jobs for each other and bought each other lunch as a thank you. And this even led to us becoming each other's first picks if any clients we were working with asked around for additional animators. These creative degrees will have their issues and pitfalls, but so will literally any other field of study. And even apprenticeships and education provided through employment will have their caveats. It's mostly a matter of whether or not you want to stick that out and weigh up what exactly you're doing it all for. And if you think it's worth it for the sake of your own personal enrichment. When I think of my prospects in animation in the UK, I often think why I even bothered to specialise in 2D in particular. Considering the fact that most 2D animation job prospects are located in places like the US, Canada and South Korea, and the UK is more frequently associated with stop motion productions like Wallace and Gromit created by studios like Admin Animations. I'm in no position to uproot my entire life and run away to Los Angeles, except maybe for VidCon. And the 2D animation that is here is mostly puppet animation, which I have limited experience in compared compared to hand-drawn. I also think about how maybe if I was just better at everything, how if my skills were up to par or if I just tried harder, made better connections, things could have been different during the pandemic and I could have become someone valuable and irreplaceable. But looking at the way things are now, all of that probably wouldn't have saved me from being laid off like many of the workers struggling in the industry currently. If a company is going to fire a human artist in favor of using AI or if a studio is going to shelve a project mid-production for a tax break, it wouldn't matter whether that person was a fresh-faced graduate or someone who had been working for 30 years with a slew of experience and prestige behind them. These changing tides push all of us out to sea one way or another. But like I kept saying before, the thing I personally love most about creative sectors is that it's deeply rooted in community. Productions are a collaborative process. People learn to be team players and appreciate what the other creatives around them have to offer, which is why AI is often so rallied against, because it doesn't really offer that same sense of community and is the product of people who have no interest in really understanding whether 
that sense of community comes from, only that they want to benefit from it. Creatives learn to grow and adapt together to be able to overcome these kinds of obstacles, and the motivation behind that isn't always monetary, otherwise things like indie animation wouldn't be going through such a boom right now. As well as this, I know that many people, especially international creatives, feel that they need to relocate in order to broaden their career prospects, and for the most part this is true, but I would like to put my own idealistic thoughts out there. I personally don't think it's a bad idea for some people who may be outliers within their geographical location or respective area of expertise to consider sticking to their guns and try to establish themselves right where they are. While yes, having the conventional set of skills that are typically looked for in any industry and also being in the right place will make you employable, having your own flavour and approach to creativity will set you apart and make you memorable. This is how we end up with animation styles and series that stand out not just in an immediate circle, but even further reaching areas. Adman Animations, as I mentioned before, is a studio that often specialises in stop motion and is responsible for projects like Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run. The only other stop motion studio that comes to my mind is Studio Laika, which made Coraline, Kubo and the Two Strings, and others. I often think about my old classmates who were from all different corners of the world where animation isn't so prominent, and who fretted a lot about whether they'll be able to make it even with the help of their degree because of so many precarious factors, only for them to return to those places with this qualification that emboldens them to establish themselves as people to watch out for within these more localised areas. And by proxy, this can also help you stand tall within the sea of works that may be very similar to one another, which can be very important in regards to AI-generated works that all drink from the same cup. What I'm trying to say here is, the creative sectors can be a polarising place to study and try to find work in, and a lot of that comes down to you being willing to play the long game with it. There are many trials and tribulations that come and go within the industry. Not long ago it was NFTs, right now it's AI, but becoming an artist is an investment that not only looks at the monetary benefits of the individual, which can often be the most frustrating part about it, but also the potential to influence, work with, and create something that provides enjoyment to a wider community. It's a bit like becoming a YouTuber. To make it work, you have to love what you do, and you have to be willing to wait and to work for it, and that will often be the most important thing both to others watching you and to yourself. Anyway, I think that's enough waffling from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. I have some interesting things happening at the moment. I've been putting some creative wheels in motion regarding my little pet series, Mint and Friends, which I'm hoping to share with you all very, very soon. If you want more up-to-date public information as to what I'm up to, then please consider following my other social medias. I'm mostly active on Twitter, mainly because I like to sit back and watch people argue about nothing, but you can also find me on Tumblr, Instagram, and TikTok as well. Stay safe, everyone, and I will speak to you hopefully very soon. Bye!